Hello, everybody. It's Deborah Korn. Welcome to the Project Peacock platform. I'm really excited that you've all registered to join us and uh, take us on our to the next uh, level of Project Peacock. I want to uh, just uh, share my screen for a second and share some information with everybody. I can't actually see the platform at the moment. So if someone could just tell everybody if they're uh, in the booths to come into the theater, that would be awesome. Thank you. So Project Peacock, Prinspiration for the People. Uh, welcome to the platform. Project Peacock started in 2017 as a traveling roadshow with Peacock Pioneers, Canon Solutions America, Domtar Paper, and Skodex. And we visited advertising agencies and brands to show them the new opportunities that there were uh, with print through a show and tell. And we did that for a year and a half. We met with almost a thousand uh, uh, attendees and it wasn't big enough. So in 2019, we started Project Peacock Print Fair. We got some more partners. We went to, we took it out of the conference rooms. We went to event spaces. And by the time 2019 was done, uh, we had visited four cities and we in the United States and we also went to Canada and we had met with more than 2200 attendees. Then when when Sarah trombone COVID, COVID hit and uh, Project Peacock was canceled last year. But this year I did not want another uh, year to go by, uh, you know, why things were in fluctuation. So Project Peacock is now a 24-7 resource platform where everyone can get the same information uh, that they were getting at the print fairs and at the in-house visits. Basically, the concept is pretty simple. Get intel, get samples, get partners. Don't search Google, search Peacock. Too many people out there are looking for, I need a new idea in print, Mr. Google, or find a printer near me, Mr. Google. We don't want that to happen. So we have curated a bunch of companies in here who can help everybody level up their printing and, and print marketing. So the idea is to get intel from our sessions, from our webinars, from our education that will be uh, going on throughout the year, and then go to the booths and uh, learn about all the partners and what they do. Look at the software companies because they actually have printer partners in the platform who can help you if you think their technology is cool. The same thing with the press makers and um, the finishing uh, manufacturers. And of course, the paper people are the paper people. But after that, you can set yourself on an own, your own mission to elevate uh, your print and print marketing through this platform and through finding uh, partners. If there's something that you can't find, just reach out to me and let me know and I will find it for you. So a little bit about me. My name is Deborah Korn. I'm, like I said, I'm the intergalactic ambassador to the Printiverse. I run a website called Print Media Center. We have a bunch of initiatives, but you can visit the Print Media Center booth and figure out uh, how to navigate from there. Project Peacock is all about print inspiration. What is print inspiration? The process of being mentally stimulated to do something creative with print. Yes, people, there is a plethora of coolness that you can do with print and add to print. You might just not know about those tools and technologies and that is why Project Peacock is here. So come back, visit often and tell all your colleagues and connections that not to search Google, search Peacock. I want to uh, give a shout out to our platform partners, uh, the Advertising Production Club of New York, where I am proud to be an advisory board member and to Compare Media who donates the uh, research stylings of Lily Harder uh, and uh, Lily, of course, donates her time, her energy, and her expertise to help us all become smarter marketers. And she's coming up in just one moment. I want to thank all of our Peacock partners uh, that are out on the platform. And these are all the people you can learn from, request samples from, get demos from if you're in a technology purchasing situation. Uh, there are some analysts in there who can help you uh, navigate uh, your your print shop or your operations or, um, you know, if you're a printer out there and you're looking for graphic services, some graphic help, we have marketing services in there. We also have digital marketing services. So please 
visit everybody and see how they can help your business. The homepage of the platform is called The Lobby, and I posted some uh, quick tips. If you need any help during the live event, just go into the uh, Peacock information booth and Josh Power is there to help you. And if you need help when you're not, when we're not on the platform, just click email and in the same booth and we'll find everybody after. In the partner booths is actually a cool feature where they can have sessions and presentations and live discussions up to 25 people at a time could be at like a Zoom meeting. But it, all the controls are open to everybody. So please be mindful of this and keep your mic and video off unless it's an open discussion. And please do not click the screen share unless you were asked. We learned before that that's a bad idea. So please don't. And the last thing uh, I wanted to mention is that there is a, a Peacock platform promise in that this is not an aggressive place for sales and marketing. This is a place for education and networking. So if any of the attendees feel that a line has been crossed, please let me know. As well, if you do not have a booth on this platform, please be respectful of the people who do. And this is not an opportunity for you to share your products and services with, with everybody else. But if you want a booth, we have space for you. So just get in touch. We are sharing with Pro hashtag Project Peacock on the social streams. And uh, as we say in the printiverse, Peacock long and prosper. That's all for me. So I have two things to say. First of all, Tina Kilby from SGI, happy birthday. And thank you so much for spending your time with us. I need to give a shout out to Jeannie Power and Josh Power and the Link Events. This is the same company that has been helping me with those Project Peacock print fairs. Um, and they had already had an online um, you know, division, thank God, in their uh, event uh, company. So I just hopped on something that was already going. And uh, I cannot say enough about this company and working with them. If you have event needs, they actually have a booth here. Please visit them there. And just to say that they're awesome. Um, and now I actually want to introduce Siobhan Docks. Is Siobhan here? From APC, there she is, the president of the Advertising Production Club of New York, to say a few words to everybody. Hi, guys. Hi, Deborah. I mean, before I start, can we please take a proper look at that peacock? You haven't introduced her to us. I'm sorry. He's got a green screen problem at the moment. Oh, it's a he. Oh, yes. okay. Well, he's very beautiful. Thank you. <laughs> awesome. Well, thank you, Deborah. Um, and thank you for the, you know, thanks for the opportunity to join you um, this evening on the launch of your platform. Um, and the first of which I have no doubt will be absolutely killer events this year. Um, so for anyone that isn't, uh, hasn't, doesn't know me or we haven't met before, um, my name is Siobhan Dorks. I'm the president of the Advertising Production Club of New York. Um, so we are, as well as being a very proud sponsor, Project Peacock, um, an organization with two really big goals. Um, we seek to support students who are looking to enter the world of media, creative production and advertising. Um, and we work with many of the, prof the professionals who are kind of already in the industry um, to support them with their kind of ongoing education um, and provide them with the opportunity to meet peers um, and share experiences um, of their industry wealth, wealth of knowledge. Um, so it's, to achieve these goals, um, we provide kind of educational events for students um, and for the professionals of the industry. Um, we provide a strong community environment. Um, and on top of this, we fundraise for both our scholarship as well as our internship programs. Um, and I'm sure many of you on here today will have um, be very aware of the APC, have come to our events in the past, um, or been members of ours for a long time. Um, so like many organizations, um, we've moved to a much more online programming model in the last year. Um, we have a very offline um, model um, and um, we've done all we can to kind of continue to provide the valuable content and conversations that we believe um, our community and, and you guys um, really want to be having. Um, and our partnership with Project Peacock is fully in line with this ongoing promise to our members. Um, so as well as these education webinars, we provide tons of opportunities to stay connected with each other, meet others in the community, whether that be that you're a student or a young professional trying to just get started. 
um, and understand the, the kind of ecosystem a little more or whether that's um, you're one of the kind of incredible individuals who have been a part of growing this industry for many, many years. Um, we are absolutely there for, for both sets of that of the community. Um, if you would like to learn a little bit more about these events um, and these kind of opportunities to get involved, as Deborah's mentioned, please head over to our booth this evening, um, where we would love to discuss the benefits of both being a member um, and a sponsor um, of, of, you know, um, in order to kind of support those, um, those scholarship and sponsorship, um, sorry, and uh, fundraising internship opportunities. Um, there's several of us on that booth coming in and out of the evening. So um, someone's definitely gonna be able to help you and talk more. Um, so I guess before I before I pass it back, I just wanted to say a really massive thank you to Deborah and the whole Project Peacock team. Um, Deborah and her team have supported our board and our members for several years, um, and they continue to work tirelessly to support the full community at large, really. Um, to be partnering on the launch of um, the Project Peacock platform is not only an honor, um, but we also have, you know, at, at, on behalf of the whole of the APC board, um, I know that, you know, we just wanted to be very clear. We have no doubt that joining forces with, with Project Peacock um, will have a huge impact on our combined communities and industries. And um, yeah, I, with that, um, I would just say everybody, thank you and have a lovely evening. Thanks, Deborah. Thanks. I almost want to leave right now. Like that was that was really cool. Thank you. Thank you so much. I really appreciate that. And as we move forward, uh, we're going to use this platform for many things. And one of them is Project Peacock People, where we're going to help students and create some job opportunities and maybe some even internship or apprenticeship channels. So uh, obviously all of that will work in a combination with uh, the APC. And thank you guys so much for for everything and um, everybody visit their booth and get involved. Thanks, Siobhan. Thanks, guys. So next is uh, the main event, as we say. And um, what can I say about Lily Harder? She is, um, I, I run an organization called Girls Who Print where I'm girl number one. And Lily has 6,000 fangirls uh, who absolutely, uh, eat up everything that uh, Lily says. She did a bunch of presentations for Girls Who Print uh, last year. So um, Lily is um, a, 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 what what Lily knows and what Lily is going to share is going to help you strategize on your projects for the year, uh, at least in the, in, certainly in the short term, and also uh, give you an idea about what consumers are doing uh, right now. So uh, Lily will tell you more about her company and her background, but um, right now I'd like to uh, welcome Lily Harder. Hello, everybody. Um, I'm actually gonna go um, into the chat now and turn off my video. So, uh, but Lily, I'm listening and I know that I have chime in right. So um, thank you so much for, for joining us uh, and for being a platform partner and for all that you do to really help all of us be smarter marketers. It really matters. Thank you, Lily. Of course. Thanks, Deborah. Hi, everybody. Good evening. Good morning. I'm not sure where everybody is these days or, or right now, um, but uh, so excited to be here. I'm excited to present yet again. Um, love all these collaborations I've been able to do with Deborah and Print Media Center and all of that. So I'm really here to talk to you today about what we're seeing at uh, Compra Media um, and, and, you know, really kind of looking at direct mail, but really from a broader lens of omni-channel marketing. That, that's really what we um, have the expertise in and what I have been presenting on for many years now. Um, but just a little bit of background. If you're not familiar with uh, Mintel or Compromedia, I know it can sometimes be a little bit complicated. Mintel is uh, the parent company. Compromedia is part of Mintel, and really we are a global market research firm. Uh, we are here to provide clients across the globe with information on what consumers want and why. And we have a variety of products and services that uh, provide this for our clients. So everything from primary research reports where we're really digging into those consumer behaviors um, and trying to understand the decision-making process. So you're gonna see a lot of that great data in my presentation today. We track consumer trends, we have a, 
um, totally bespoke research consultancy arm. And then we also have our Compra Media platforms, which is sort of these left two columns that you're seeing here, where we have two state of the art platforms where we are literally monitoring all of the marketing collateral that is coming from brands across um, North America, so US and Canada uh, for this marketing collateral database. And we're tracking everything from direct mail to email, mobile, online, print. And we've just uh, expanded our offering to really provide the 360 degree view where we now have paid social, digital, video, podcasts, we've got it all, TV. Um, so we're really putting it all together to, again, paint that holistic picture for our clients. Um, uh, both sides, not only what the consumers want, but what are your competitors doing? So we're providing that competitive intelligence um, angle. So if you want to learn more, I have lots of information uh, at the end of the presentation to get in touch, but really, really invite you uh, to come to our booth after this presentation, um, just to better understand what we do, because um, because it, it's quite a robust offering. Um, and really, that's what's leading into the information that I have for you today, which is not only what consumers want, but um, what are marketers doing to adjust to these changing consumer behaviors that we're seeing? Um, and we really are experiencing a totally new type of consumer. Um, I, I probably was saying the same thing two years ago, but now I have to say it in a totally new way because the new consumer we're seeing today is very different from the new consumer we were saying, seeing two years ago, of course, um, greatly impacted by the pandemic. Um, but I think it's really important just to understand that when thinking about how to reach your audience, yes, message is important and the right offer is important, but the where is really important. And that that really gets to that omni-channel mix that we're, we're trying to um, uh, trying to highlight here, trying to shine a light on. And direct mail is very much a key part of that holistic omni-channel mix. Um, but today's consumer and this post-COVID consumer has uh, very different behaviors and attitudes towards how they engage with brands and how they expect brands to engage with them. So let's talk a little bit about this. Let's talk a little bit about what we're seeing uh, in the marketing landscape. Um, and this is this is throughout 2021, but I think we can look further. I think we can also look into 2022 as well. I know most brands are doing some of their 22 planning already. So we need to acknowledge a few marketing trends that we're seeing. So one is video, um, really, really seeing a robust uptick in video again as part of that holistic mix. Um, brands embracing more niche audiences. You know, consumers are really identifying with close-knit groups. Now, whether it's the pod that maybe you uh, huddled with over the pandemic, or maybe you're associating with just a very niche type of community, we're seeing brands trying to target more to these um, specific communities as opposed to just broad demographics like we used to do. Um, we're seeing a lot more connection at the local level, whether that's supporting local businesses or just reaching consumers based on those local communities. Um, and then I have to talk about podcasts and influencer marketing, because again, that's just an area we're seeing a lot of uh, interest in lately. So just to start with direct mail, again, to level set, because I know we, we've gotten this question a lot from clients, which is what's happening with direct mail? Where is it going or what happened with the pandemic? So I just wanted to give you, again, a snapshot of what we're tracking, what we're seeing literally in mailboxes across the U.S., which is that direct mail's back. I mean, it certainly took a plunge in those early months of the, of the pandemic. And what you're seeing here is our um, proprietary estimated mail volume metrics. So we're actually uh, showcasing how many pieces of mail are sent across brands, uh, industries. Um, in this case, we sort of have it sectored out by, by category. Um, and you can see there was just a really significant dip, especially in financial services and some other categories in those early months of the pandemic. But we're pretty much back to where we were for the most part. Um, some industries catching up uh, more so than others. But I think that's important to know that it wasn't sort of this permanent um, scar on the channel. We're, we're seeing a lot of utilization just in different ways, new and innovative ways. Um, so I'll get into that a little bit more. I did mention video. I do think this is important because we're continuing to see increases in the use of video due to streaming and at-home viewing growth. Um, and more brands are just tailoring their identities to meet the, the video consumption of um, today's consumers. So video is, is a very effective storytelling tool. Um, and it also allows marketers to really communicate complex information in a, in a simple and easy to digest form. To be honest, it's very similar to what the benefits you get from direct mail, um, albeit in a in a um, 
digital digital format. Uh, of course, uh, we saw COVID-19 disrupt a lot of production studios. So we actually saw an uptick in the use of animated based video campaigns. That was an interesting byproduct of the pandemic. But I think we're going to see that go back to live action as, as things open up. But we just saw an overwhelming increase in the use of video, whether it was, was spend on YouTube um, or just the, the growth rate for um, video consumer reach. Uh, all those numbers are showing an increase in that. Um, I mentioned the, the idea of niche audiences. This is something I love talking about because, again, we're seeing communities kind of cluster together based on unique interests or um, very distinct attributes. And one of the things we saw the pan pandemic um, were things like the use of gaming um, and social media and influencers. So influencers is certainly um, an area that that's worth watching, um, worth dipping your toe in if you're not in already. Um, but you know, it's about being culturally relevant in a way that's not just following culture, but actually creating culture. So brands are literally leveraging this idea of fandom. Um, I, I know Deborah called um, her, her community of uh, girls who print fan girls, but there is this sort of idea of fandom to uh, gain access to and, and engage with this rapidly growing um, community based on shared interests. So we really think we're just going to see more brands embracing these niche audiences, driving authentic engagement. Just for example, um, Animal Cross New Horizon was such a viral hit, viral sensation, especially early in the pandemic when it, the new video game was launched. This is a Nintendo Switch video game. If anyone's not familiar with it, big hit, um, popular in my house, so I can I can speak to this personally. Um, but a lot of brands tapped into the equity that that this game had created and and the buzz that it was creating. So everyone from like Ally Bank, um, the Detroit Lions announced their 2020 season schedule on the, the video game. So just interesting to see this way of reaching um, not only consumers who have a shared interest, but through new channels, very experimental to utilize video games as an actual marketing channel. Um, um, connect, Lily? Yeah. I'm chiming in. Please. So I just want to help you clarify like what you mean influencers. You don't mean call up Jennifer Lopez um, in all cases. In some cases, neighborhoods have influencers or Absolutely. community groups have influencers or a, a church might be an influence in a, in a neighborhood. So that that is when when you're talking about hyper local marketing, that, that's what you're talking about, correct? Uh, yes, 100 percent. I mean, the, the Kim Kardashians are going to be the mega influencers which, you know, you probably don't even want to touch at this point, then it goes, it, there's a spectrum, there's, um, you know, more general, there's, there's macro, there's micro, there's nano influencers, you can get as specialized as you want. The point is to tap into uh, somebody or a social media um, personality that has a strong enough following that revolves around, again, those shared interests. But absolutely, no, in, when we talk about influencers, um, we're, we're seeing it run the gamut from very, um, very, very small to very, very large. Thank you so much. Yeah. Um, so at the local level too, certainly, uh, you know, whether that's, a, as you said, a community influencer or, you know, a shared community page that you're tapping into, um, we've just seen an increase in the use of more locally based uh, marketing, like with local news websites that we saw increase nearly 40% um, uh, during COVID. Really interesting that the Facebook spend that we've been tracking um, actually grew in smaller states compared to the, you know, California, New York, um, mass states where we usually see most of the action. Um, those, the spending in those major states actually declined while some of the smaller states had an uptick in spending. So again, this is just telling us that we're seeing more more tailored, more targeted, more local. Um, a lot of this, of course, driven by the emphasis of consumers and wanting to support local. Not only are they stuck at home with their local community in a good way, um, but they want to support the small businesses who have been so uh, so impacted over the last year. And I think that camaraderie and that level of support is going to continue um, in, in the near future and, and for quite a while. Um, Podcasters especially, um, again, just our data in general, showing that podcasts and influencer ads are more highly correlated with purchase behaviors. So podcasting is certainly a growing media. Um, it's gaining new listeners and advertisers every year, but our data is showing that consumers who recall hearing a podcast ad or even seeing a social media influencer ad are more likely to have made or are considering a purchase because of that ad. So depending on the cost of podcasting and, and social media advertising, brands really should be considering um, these 
channels, these mediums to really reach a more willing consumer. So, so that's nearly four in 10 podcast listeners are considering a purchase because of an ad that they heard. So it really makes the podcast audience specifically one of the most receptive audiences to digital advertising, to those, to those ads. So really important to keep that in mind, again, as part of this sort of holistic picture. Um, let, let's go into the, the consumer. Um, this is where we have so much robust data, so much great information. We know the pandemic is going to leave an impact for quite some time. Um, we we ha- are seeing just new attitudes to how we are prioritizing aspects of our lives. So whether that's our physical health, whether it's our mental health, both of which we're seeing a lot more focus on, um, or the types of brands that we want to associate with. Um, a lot of this is coming down to uh, increase in, in um digital connectivity. We're we're all on our phones more. We're all streaming more. We're relying on technology a lot more. But at the same time, we've really been presented with a lot of social, ethical, um, even controversial issues that we're grappling with. And so that's something that not only our consumers looking for, but but challenging brands to really speak up about. Um, So this is an area I, I talk about quite a bit of thinking about values and ethics. And we're really tracking almost like a new subset of consumers that we're calling activists. Um, And uh, these are consumers that are really expecting marketers to take a stand on specific topics. That doesn't mean every topic. It doesn't mean you have to take a stand on everything. But if there's one area, even if it might be a little controversial, that does connect to the brand vision, to the brand identity, it's worth making a statement. It's worth standing up and and saying what you think. So what we're seeing is that nearly half of consumers in the 18 to 34 range believe that brands and companies have a responsibility to work toward a solution for racial and gender equity, Um, really just demonstrating that brands have to decide if if they're going to be neutral on a subject and not relatable or to speak up and be considered the brand that's really aligned with their their core values. So whatever the issue is, whether it's um, what I mentioned or or any other issues, we are seeing consumers, especially those consumers that consider themselves activists and are are really um, interested in this area, these brands are being challenged to speak up. Um, We are seeing, um, I mentioned that reprioritization this is, this is fresh data, fresh um, hot off the press data uh, that you are getting uh, really um, l- exclusive access to, I will say. Um, but we're seeing that Americans have, are just reevaluating their life priorities. Um, I read some stats that uh, women are rethinking whether to have kids or when to have children or how many children to have more so now because of the pandemic than ever before. Um, so one of the silver linings of 2020 is that it's, you know, in a good way, Americans are taking stock in their life goals and their priorities. So it's been a challenging year, um, but the pandemic has sort of also in a way refocused people um, on, you know, those things that maybe they were taking for granted, um, those things that are truly are important to them. So whether that's family relationships or mental health, um, there is this new mindset and the majority are really optimistic about what 2021 is gonna bring to their personal lives. So, so I do think that's a silver lining. I think that's something to be aware of, but thinking about how that reprioritization may be impacting brand engagement. Um, the other thing that we're seeing too, I mentioned the, the emphasis on locality. So I mentioned that from sort of the marketing strategy side, but from a consumer mindset as well, um, this plays into uh, what brands are expected to do, what consumers are expecting of the brands that they engage with. So as I said, we, we certainly have a need to focus on community, health, well-being, um, but what we're seeing is that brand missions, I'll call them brand missions, that have more tangible impacts tend to um, have the most consumer interest. So if people can really understand very tactically how they're helping, they're actually going to be more likely to to give back, to to show that support. So when it comes to mission-driven efforts specifically, we really recommend, recommend that brands should be looking to connect back to their core mission, their core purpose or principles to really provide proof as to how they support these various efforts. Um, so again, all of this, you, you, the proof is in the pudding. You know, you can't just say that you support a cause. You got to show them how. You got to um, put the, the um, numbers behind that or the uh, efforts behind that. Uh, and then the other thing that we're seeing too, again, I'm still going on this bandwagon of, um, of activism and, and ethics and all of this. Consumers are, are um, you know, 
not only expecting brands to do the right thing, uh, but they're seeing companies almost as an outlet for their own ethical expressions and mission, um, mission-based mission mentality. Um, so shopping at certain brands is almost an expression of those values. Uh, so we're actually seeing sort of this rise of mission-based retail is what we're, we're calling it, um, as, as brands are really trying to incorporate those values, those missions, both internally and externally across a variety of consumer touch points. Um, it's all about maintaining consistency. It's about about transparency and actions, um, and you know, maybe even appealing to the naysayers. So, um, thinking about those sort of expectations, you know, how how are you going to get your brand to clearly stand out on important matters and communicate what what you're doing, why it matters, all of that? It's about connecting the dots, um, and we're seeing that in in some of the marketing. We're certainly seeing that coming through. So, let's talk about that. Let's talk about what we're actually seeing. And this is where I really want to focus on the direct mail because as part of that holistic omni-channel mix, it's so important to, to utilize the benefits that direct mail offers. It is an inherently beneficial channel because it's got the, the tactical aspect. You have a lot of real estate. It's got longevity, way longer than any of these digital or email um, channels. But if you're going to utilize direct mail, you have to do so in a meaningful way. It, it's really thinking... Um, outside the box, but inside the box. I know we've used that phrase so much. So it's about connecting channels, connecting direct mail to those other digital channels. Um, it's about making the most of the channel and really trying to um, capitalize on the time that you're being given every time a recipient opens a piece of mail. So I have some campaigns in here. Anyone who's heard me speak before, you may recognize some of these. I have some new ones in here that I found particularly interesting. Um, but let's talk about the idea of shifting priorities. So that's something that I mentioned as being a, a strong change in consumer mentality right now, how we're reprioritizing. I thought this was a really uh, unique campaign. So this is actually from TELUS Health um, in Canada, but I thought it was really unique. So it's a fold out piece um, in terms of, you know, connecting the dots with TELUS Health and how it, it's telemedicine, you know, being able to speak with a nurse practitioner or a doctor over the, over your phone. But I just love that it was, you know, the waiting room was crossed out and it's all about family time because that's what they're gaining from this um, and putting the emphasis on what's really going to be the priority um, and, and the top of mind for the person that's receiving this. So I kind of love the message of this and, and the emphasis on that with the cross out. Um, Giving back, again, another area that, that we see quite a bit of, um, it, it can happen both ways. So, of course, you want to support brands that are supporting, supporting certain causes, but customers want an opportunity to be able to give back themselves. So I just thought this was an interesting approach to that. We see bank, we capture so many banking offers where, you know, $200 to opening, open a checking account or $300 to open a savings account. I mean, decades they've been doing this. Um, but I just thought this was interesting from Citizens Bank that you get the incentive for opening a, an account. Um, and then when you open a checking account, the bank will donate 100 meals to Feeding America on your behalf. So it connects the um, potential customer with the contribution and makes them part of the process. Something unique. I have not seen this, especially in banking. Um, and I've been doing this for a very long time. Um, engagement. This is, I, I, I don't know what it was about this campaign, to be completely honest. There was something about this one that struck me just being that it was relatively new. I just, you know, we picked it up over the holidays. Um, it's from Walmart's family mobile uh, partnership with T-Mobile. So it's their family plan. I just thought the aesthetics of it were, um, were engaging, but it also had this fun fold out. It's a little hard to tell because when our, um, when we scan these campaigns, we have to kind of take them apart in a way. But you see the bow and it's a fold out. So when it folds out, it looks like this and it has the two flaps. Um, a couple of things struck me about this, which is that it is connecting the online and the offline channels, but it's doing it with a specific URL. Um, I actually was kind of surprised there was not a QR code on this, to be honest. There, there easily could have been, um, but it was an interesting way to, to make that connection, connect with the holidays. It had the gift element, um, but really, again, just sort of capitalizing on the, the imagery and the excitement that you just can't get in, in any digital channel. But it made me really think, again, the lack of Q, ever, anyone who's heard me speak knows I love QR codes. Uh, so the lack of a QR code kind of 
um, bugged me, but I thought it was a good transition to show why QR codes are so important. Um, and I, I think QR codes are just so big right now. I think we are going to see a lot more of them. We're going to see them used in more innovative ways, um, but they're finally having their moment as just a way to really connect printed material with digital content. So whether you're you're scanning a QR code on the TV, which is happening now, or a QR code on a um, restaurant table printout or direct mail piece. Um, we're just seeing a lot of new innovative applications. Um, so my, my, my go-to pieces for how to really use QR codes effectively um, are some of these. I give a few examples. You can just put a QR code on any piece and it may drive someone to your website. So kind of like what Geico and Travelers did on the left here. Clever because it has the umbrella. Great. It looks a little bit aesthetically recognizable. But to be honest, um, this wasn't the best example or the best sort of application in my book because it took the scan, the person who scanned it to the website and you had to log in. So the more clicks it takes or logins or anything to get through from a QR code to a landing page, the less traffic you're going to get to that final page. The Synchrony Bank on the piece, this is one of my favorites. Um, I just thought it was so effective, especially given my, my experience in the financial services space, um, knowing that rates are so, they fluctuate so often. So this was an offer for a certificate of deposit. And instead of putting the rate for the CD right on the piece, which could easily be outdated by the time it lands in someone's mailbox, they put the QR code so you could scan for the most up-to-date real-time rate and then, of course, easily lead you to an application page. So I, I give that um, a big, big thumbs up for uh, innovation in that. Um, the Wayfair credit card statement on the right here, too, I just think this is unique, again, in the financial space because it's such an easy way to connect someone's statement. This is literally a credit card statement for Wayfair that someone received. And it, you know, usually you get your bill if you're actually still getting a paper bill and then you have to go to your online banking and type everything in. Well, they provided the QR code so you could literally pay in one click. You don't even have to log into the account. It takes you right to that accounts page um, and you can you know, say pay minimum balance or pay in full in, in as little as two clicks. So again, efficiency was, was key here. Um, but we, again, we have to get past the sort of just click on this to learn more. Uh, we have to be careful to provide an actual um, incentive for why to click on something. So uh, this one is for referring a friend. I like this one from Delta um, where it had a, a easy to scan QR code to refer friends. I'm gonna call out the credit card industry because they've actually been um, utilizing QR codes uh, maybe more than any other category that we track. Uh, and we're seeing so many. I've seen some pieces. I think it was for United's family of credit cards. They sent out an offer recently, and I think it had three QR codes, one on every single page, just to make sure you understood how easy it was to, to click on them. A um, few more examples here that I really like. So I'm going to move past the QR code stage for a little bit, although always happy to answer questions on those if people have them. Um, an example of, of a really interesting pivot that I saw, and I've talked about this before, but I thought it was unique, was Ashley Furniture. I noticed that during the pandemic, they started sending out postcards with, um, of course, a coupon. They always want you to come in store. Interesting that they were offering 30% off valid in-store only, um, which I don't even know if I, I realized before. Um, I don't know who was going into the store when they were sending this out a year ago, but they also were providing the digital option. So if you look on the um, bottom piece, the flip side, it says shop your way. And they literally provided every possible digital option to go shopping, whether it was FaceTime, Zoom, WhatsApp, Skype, um, or you could book an appointment, of course, with the QR QR code there. And I'm showing you the, the landing page of what that looked like, where you could have an appointment. And even there, it's a choice. You know, do you want an in-store appointment or do you want a virtual consultation? So really thinking about um, providing the choice and letting the customer decide what they are most comfortable with. Um, lots more examples here. I don't want to take up too much time. I think I know we're kind of getting uh, to the end of my session, but I'll tell you what, I have some more pieces in here I can show. Um, after this, while we're back at the booth, if you want to come check it out, I'm always happy to go through some of the other examples that I have in the deck um, and show you those in my booth. Uh, if you are looking for more, I mean, if you want to know how to spend smarter and not just keep throwing money at channels that aren't working, if you're looking for opportunities to really stand out from your unique competitive set or just trying to understand what your competitors in your industry are doing, um, or if you're trying to launch a new product or 
um, you're going through an acquisition. Any, all of these situations are things that we help clients with every single day. Again, we have a um, very robust suite of products and services. Um, our Omni platform, this is where we're really doing that 360 degree marketing uh, monitoring of all the channels. And I'll even show you here. These are all the channels that we're tracking right now. So very robust, very exciting. Um, and, and you know, we are always looking to add more channels. So lots here at your fingertips. It's a self-serve platform, but we have a um, very large dedicated research team that's constantly adding value to the um, content that we're producing. And then finally, I can't leave without offering a little bit of a um, treat, surprise, whatever you want to call it, um, fun new report that we just launched in I want to say February, March. So again, also hot off the press, looking at outer envelopes. This is an area that you're um, starting to explore or working with or want to just understand how other uh, brands are utilizing outer envelopes to really make the most of informed delivery. This is a great report for you. Um, so you're welcome to get in touch with my colleague, David. His information is on the slide here, but he is also going to be at the booth. Um, so if you want to come over and ask him questions or uh, feel like dropping uh, your email, we'd be happy to provide you this report for free. Um, yours uh, at the low, low price of just coming to hang out with us at the booth. So with that, I want to thank everybody so much. Uh, again, my name is Lily Harder. I'm Senior Director of Marketing Strategy with Compra Media, and I look forward to speaking with you all soon. Lily Harder, everybody. There, there weren't any questions. There was just glowing, amazing, um, amazing intel as always. And um, I mean, people were riveted. I think I was the only one chatting in there. Um, at one point, um, but um, that was that was absolutely amazing. Um, everybody, obviously, go to Lily's booth. She's in there. She always has uh, something to give away. That's really cool. Outer envelopes, amazing. I need that, so I'm going to be downloading that because every once in a while I have permission to, you know, with my little caveat, you know, I I take some of Lily's information and and we we spread the love. So, Lily. Thank you so much for your time, for your expertise. Lily is actually going to be back at least four more times. I say at least because, you know, maybe if you're nice to her and you visit her booth, she'll come back more. But um, she'll be here for Project Peacock Packaging, Project Peacock Publishing, and Project Peacock Point of Sale. And then we'll think of some more P's that she can join in on. So um, thank you so much, Lily. Um, I'm actually going to uh, introduce the other partners right now. And then um, we are going to um, uh, you know, start the, the booth wandering. So um, when I actually had the idea for Project Peacock, I was at a Canon Solutions America event and Tanya Powers was standing next to me. And she just looked at me and she said, we're in. And I was like, what? <laughs> I was like, I'm having a drink. What do you What do you mean you're in? She's like, we're in. This is a great idea. Canon Solutions America has been in since the minute I came up. We came up with the concept. Actually, it was kind of a group effort there. I, Tanya might have even contributed Peacock. I, I, it could be. Uh, but without further ado, uh, they've been with us. They at the print fairs, at the visits. Um, I Project Peacock would not be here without the support of Canon Solutions America. So please, Tanya and Sherry, please uh, join us. Hello, everybody. Good evening. <laughs> Thank you, Deborah, for that lovely introduction. Um, I remember that evening very well. Um, and I just want to say hello to everyone and just say Canon is just thrilled, absolutely thrilled to be here tonight with everyone and celebrate the first Project Peacock event of 2021. We're so glad to join everybody. Um, as Deborah mentioned, we've been a part of the, the Project Peacock. We're pioneers with our, our good friends, Dom Tar from the inception. And we have loved seeing this community grow um, and having that opportunity to share and learn. That's really what Canon and Canon Solutions America, Canon is all about. We, we're about community and learning and growing together and just building everybody up. Um, so just really happy to be a part of this and, and, and sharing it, how we can make uh, all the wonderful things possible with the power of print. 
Um, so as Deborah mentioned, I, I am Tanya Powers. I am the Director of Marketing at the Production Print Solutions Division at Canon. Um, and that really means uh, we're all about uh, the high-speed production inkjet business. Um, and I've got a lot of people here from my team joining me from the marketing team. I've got Jeff and Jane and Lucy and Sherry Jamalo. Sherry Jamalo, actually, I'm going to bring her up in a second here. She is our senior advisor. Um, and she's going to talk a little bit more about some of the awesome presentations that we're going to be sharing with you um, in our booth tonight. So we really would love to have you guys come and join us and chat with us and hear and learn a little bit more and share some more awesome ideas about the possibilities of print. So Sherry, I'm going to turn it over to you. Thank you, Tanya. We are super, super excited to be here tonight. Um, we have two presentations we're excited to share with everybody. The first is a lively discussion with Jeff Saringer and Jane Nerf on the advancements of our Canon production presses showcasing real life applications and post finishing opportunities to enhance the print en engagement. And our second presentation, very cool, um, features Nicole Tully adding about uh, communications, trends and direct mail in the post COVID era. Nicole highlights the ways in which print can enhance digital communications and break through the clutter of the digital world we live in today. So please join us in the Canon booth after the general session concludes, which is about now, and we'll present each of the sessions twice to allow everybody to participate. We will be running them on the half hour, so please join us and please participate, and we look forward to talking with each and every one of you. Thank you so much, Sherry. Um, unfortunately, your video didn't come through. So if everyone wants to know what Sherry looks like, either click on her profile <laughs> picture or go visit uh, the Canon booth and you can uh, get a picture of uh, Sherry. Thanks. Thank you, ladies, so much. Thank, Thank you for you. all your support, not just on Project Peacock, but for everything. Like I said, you know, you, you guys are my ride or dies. Uh, next, I'd like to bring on uh, another Project Peacock pioneer, Ashley Madak from Domtar Paper. Hello, Ashley. Hi, Becca. Hi, everyone. Um, so <laughs> um, I told the story about standing next to Tanya Powers when yeah. she said we're in. And then the second person I spoke to was a, a fabulous woman named Vanessa Carr, who goes by V. Yeah. And I said, V, I've got this crazy idea. And I don't even yes. think I got v halfway is, through. Um, and she was like, we're in. Leader. Yeah, we've been very supportive. Um, v is the amazing leader that we have in the marketing department. And um, we've been a very proud supporter and a very proud pioneer of Project Peacock. I feel very lucky to have had the opportunity to be at every single Peacock from visiting people in the places where they work to the amazing trade shows. And I think we all want to be safely interacting with each other again, but this is definitely the next best thing. This is an awesome platform. So uh, uh, again, uh, if you could just let everybody uh, know a little bit about what's going on in the Domtar booth, and then uh, we'll move on to our next exhibitors so we can get to the booth. Definitely. So um, Dom Tar, if you're not familiar with us, we're best known for our brands, um, Cougar and Leaks and Husky. And today we are going to be um, presenting, we have three presentations actually, um, all, you know, focused around this postal theme. The first one is um, Direct Mail Basics for 2021. And so that one begins at 7.15 and we're going to be discussing, you know, the importance of matching your paper and choosing the right paper to the technology that you're printing on, different considerations that you should be making as someone creating the direct mail piece or, you know, who you're talking to, what generation they're from, and also different techniques or opportunities that you can tap into to really generate that ROI, get the biggest thing for your buck, can get people to engage with you and notice. At 7.45, we are going to showcase the secrets behind our Cougar with Purpose promo. So we're going to go through our printed promotion and talk about some of the printing techniques that we've utilized in there. There's a lot of great direct mail ideas within that piece. So that should be a very, very fun one. And of course, you know, be sure to click on the samples, the request sample button in our booth to get that promo sent to you. And then at 8.15, my friend Meredith Collins, who's also in our marketing department, she is going to be going over the Links for Sure promotion. And so also showcasing the 
secrets and the tips, the printing techniques and the design tips that went into making that piece. Um, a great, great piece. Also some great direct mail ideas in there too. So um, at the Dumbler booth, we have myself, the brand and creative manager. We have Meredith Collins, who's our customer marketing manager and Luanne DeBolt, who is our corporate events manager. So please stop by and see us. Thanks for having us again, Deborah. Thank you so much, Ashley. And thank you so much to Domtar Paper for being Project Peacock Pioneers and Partners Ride or Die. And Ashley's my trade show wife, everybody. So hands <laughs> on. Um, next, I'd like to bring to the stage um, Erica Switzer from Direct Mail 2.0. What is Direct Mail 2.0? This is a technology you need to know about and not only will you get to know about it, but there are actually print service providers on this platform who can help you execute and actually deliver measurable, measurable results and actual ROI for your mail and you can prove it. Um, but nobody talks about their product better than Erica. Every time she talks about it, as a matter of fact, I want to buy it, but I'm not a printer, so it's not going to help me. Um, but without further ado, Erica Switzer, Direct Mail 2.0. And by the way, I think Bradley's here too. Bradley, thank you so much for your support over the years as well. I actually, um, you guys came over to me at a Graph Expo. I believe you were watching our live stream from your booth and you were like, what is this? And how do we get involved? And those are my favorite people. Like you just jump in the pool. You're like, I don't know what's going on here, but I want part of it. So thank you so much. Thank you for having us, Deborah. Really appreciate being here and uh, such a fan of the theme, Project Peacock. Uh, love it, love it. I am Erica Switzer and I am the Chief Revenue Officer here at Direct Mail 2.0. I do have um, Brad, who is the CEO of Direct Mail 2.0. I also have our Marketing Director, Andre, um, and he will be uh, basically going around and in our booth. And then also our VP of business development, Sabrina McCulley will be in our booth. And basically direct mail 2.0, we are a marketing uh, technology for direct mail. Uh, and we integrate seven technologies with direct mail to help track the effectiveness of the campaign and enhance the results on average by 23 to 46%. So everything that Lily was going over with you all, I'm sitting back here going, yes, yes, that's exactly right, yes. Um, so what we're gonna be doing in our booth is just kind of diving into those seven technologies and doing demos every half hour. So please, please come by and see us. And Deborah, thanks again uh, for having us. We are super excited about Project Peacock and especially tonight, it all being about Postal. Thank you so much, Erica. And Erica will be back. I tap into her to present as much as possible. I also know Christine Erna is around here somewhere from Strategic Postal Advisors, uh, two great resources for uh, all of your mail needs out there. Um, okay, next we, I believe we have Chris Manley from uh, Grafco. Chris? Hello, by the way, I apologize up front for my attire. We decided to do this at the last moment and I'm actually down in Gatlinburg, Tennessee. Uh, doing some camping. So coming to you from the campground. Excellent. We're, um, of course, thrilled to be part of Project Peacock. And, um, you know, Deborah and I go way back, probably seven, eight, nine years ago, we started to see each other at the shows, had a lot of great engagements. So when she mentioned that she was going to be taking her, I think, very, very well received in person event virtual, it seemed like a great uh, event to get involved in. Our company, Graphco, provides the offset printing equipment and also digital print finishing equipment for customers throughout the Midwest. Um, these are primarily the printers that would produce the work that I think a lot of the folks that are on this event would utilize. And we are blessed to have just the most amazing group of customers um, that, that I think any businessman could be um, allowed to, to, uh, to do business with. And part of our reason to be involved in Project Peacock is to provide a kind of a clearinghouse um, engagement platform for them to be able to market their printed materials, uh, their direct mail services, their um, the rest of the uh, special effects printing and other finishing processes that they can provide to print buyers. So we're in a little bit of a different angle maybe than some of the other folks that are sponsors of this event. 
But what we've tried to do in our booth tonight is to allow folks like yourselves to perhaps see a couple of the video testimonials that our customers have been kind enough to um, produce on our behalf. And if you ever look at much of our marketing, we're not usually about the buzzers and bells of our machines. It's much more about the people that use them, the success that they've had, the ways that it's helped hopefully their businesses grow. So um, we're of course thrilled to be involved and Lily, thanks so much for emphasizing how important direct mail is. You know, I think two, three years ago, it looked like we were all down for the count and you could, theoretically sell expensive stuff via an email or something, but thank goodness it's come back down to paper and ink. So um, thanks very much for the opportunity, Deborah, and I'll um, invite people to the Graphco booth where again, you can learn a little more about our customers. Thank you. Thank you so much. And uh, one of the reasons, there's a, there's a few me reasons I love the Manleys and uh, Graphco, and that one of them is they are the Manleys. Teresa Manley, uh, Chris's lovely wife. Uh, they're usually together. And uh, I love just seeing that. And also, I'm not going to tell you what it is, but uh, we're going to get some of the um, well, we're going to get one of the companies that Grafco represents to uh, do our little ceremony uh, on a video and we'll all the uh, Project Peacock will do the clappy thing. That's all I'm going to say about it. Chris, thank Very you good. so much. Um, thank you. Next, I would like to bring on a gentleman who is my definition of uh, truly uh, an, an innovator. He's been pushing things forward uh, for a long time. Uh, when it comes to showing people like me, the end users, what is possible with, to achieve when you use their equipment. And that is why I have always gravitated to uh, Tom Wittenberg from HP. That is why I stalk him in his booth when he's at a trade show. I've, I believe I would have to be thrown out at one time uh, because I was bothering him and he had to go to an interview. Um, but Tom uh, has moved around HP a, a bit and uh, somehow we always find ourselves able to come back and work together and I couldn't be uh, more thrilled to have HP here. Uh, they brought me to Drupa. Uh, I've traveled the world in your booths, um, you know, working with you. So thank you so much, Tom. Uh, without further ado, Tom Wittenberg. Well, th thank you, Deborah. That was a, a really nice introduction. And uh, just so everybody knows, I'm Tom Wittenberg. I am the uh, large format portion of the business, industry relations and events manager here in North America. Um, something though, Deborah, you probably didn't know is I used to own a direct mail company for five years. And one of the things that will be, or I'll be available for in the booth tonight is to be able to tell you, as Lily was talking about, connecting direct mail with different digital channels. In our case, it'll be connecting direct mail with things that you can do with a large format equipment, such as signage, decor, vehicle wraps, to really enhance whatever that campaign is that you've got going. The other thing is HP is going through such a transformation. And one of these areas is sustainability. You know, we talked about, or Lily talked about values and ethics will shape the company's identity. And this is one that they've really gravitated to. But a lot of the large format equipment in terms of sustainability have changed significantly. And as a corporation, you probably don't even know this, but 1.7 million pounds of ocean plastic have gone into our PCs and actually into some of our newest printers, large format printers. So We've got lots of ideas out there, lots of ways you can expand your business, lots of ways you can enhance your, your campaigns. So please stop by the booth and enjoy. I'll be there to answer any questions. That's really cool, Tom. That reminds me of uh, Nike had a reclaim campaign where they took old sneakers and they made like ass, uh, like the, you know, where you play basketball, so it's squishy and, right. and, and they, were, they reutilized it. I love that you're doing that with the presses, bonus. And I didn't know that you had a direct mail company. See, you teach me something every time. Everybody visit HP. There's, uh, you know, and get samples. That's all I have to say. Thank you so much, Tom. Thanks. Next, we have our, everybody should hold their ears because Skodak. 
next is in the house. Um, Skodex is also a Project Peacock pioneer, although Jason uh, wasn't with the company when we started way back when. Um, I have been working with them for, I don't even know how long, uh, at least 2015 or 2016. Um, they actually found me because they heard there was some lunatic out on social media uh, who loves Skodex so much. And that was me. So um, every, all your marketing people out there, like just be true. If you really like something, talk about it, whether you're working with the company or not. And uh, you know, sometimes they circle around and magic happens. Speaking of magic, if you don't know what Skodex is or you've never seen it, go to the booth and ask them for samples. But for right now, Jason, thank you so much for your support over the years and for joining us tonight. Thank you, what a great introduction. Uh, hi, and uh, yeah, this is my first time participating. Exciting to do it, Fred and I are here tonight. We really wanna encourage you to come over to our booth. Uh, besides the open bar, we have a lot of other things we wanna share with you. Uh, for you that don't know me, I'm Jason Rollo. I manage uh, Skodix Inc. here in the United States. Uh, Skodix is really all about uh, digital embellishment. And I think we add a lot to uh, direct marketing campaign. We have uh, partners and customers that are doing it today. Some are even online uh in this event tonight and uh if it's really about making your piece stand out that's the business that we're in so come on over to our booth uh we've got a lot of content there and we would love to talk to you about our presses and our unique polymers that support uh many different applications for adding digital personalized embellishment thank you deborah Thank you so much. And uh, for people who aren't uh, familiar with digital uh, print enhancement or digital enhancements, think about when you add foil and other special effects to your print, but this time you could do it on, um, you can actually do variable data. You could do it uh, different designs, different things. It's not static. You're not sending out for a plate. So it's just, it's a new technology and you should look into it. Thank you so much, Jason. Next up, we have, um, I'm going to say one of the one of the members of the first family of print, um, Jonathan Malone McGrew. Um, if every anybody follows me on social media or uh, listens to podcasts from the Printiverse, uh, Pat McGrew is uh, my friend, my mentor. Plucked me out of obscurity, and uh, you know this is why I'm, you know partly why I'm doing this here, and. Uh, part of her lineage legacy is the lovely Jonathan Malone McGrew, who is uh, working at Salomar, who is, this is a fantastic company. Um, and um, Jonathan knows I don't really understand how technology works very well. And he's explained it to me a million times, but this is what I can say. He gave me a list of his customers that had his technology. And when I went to their websites, I was like, oh, I get it now. This is what I would say, print and everything else. So uh, without further ado, uh, I also I think Mary Ann is here. Mary Ann, uh, uh, who owns uh, the CEO of Salomar. Thank you so much uh, for your support as well over the years. And without further ado, Jonathan Malone McGrew. Well, thank you, Deborah. I, I am so glad to be here with Salomar. And of course, uh, you'll find Pat running around the uh, platform as well. Uh, you know, what we do really, Deborah, is make things better. We help people onboard work, optimize it, get it to these great partners that you've heard from that have printing equipment. And uh, we also make things more visible and more possible to track in this crazy digital world we live in. So we've got some great stuff in our booth. We have some great videos that I invite you to come uh, see. Uh, you'll probably hear our five dogs in the background because that's uh, who watches my presentations with me. So um, come by, see us. Mike's in the booth. Marianne's in the booth. Oh. I'll be there. Uh, Kevin will be chiming in if you want to talk oh. to us. And so will the Border Collie. But just know that, uh, as Marianne would say, we're like BASF, if you know that reference. We just make things better. We don't make the, the things that you print. We don't 
compose them. We just optimize them and make them better. And we have some great solutions, especially for all you people looking for augmented reality and uh, digital transformation, as well as optimization of PDF, which has really become important. So if uh, you're talking to the other vendors, make sure you ask them if they work with us, because I think you'll be pleasantly surprised. <laughs> Thank you so much, Jonathan. Tell Kevin I say hello. I will tell him. Last but certainly not least, Donna Kovanen from Zycon. All hail Zycon. I've been waiting to do this all night. Um, I mean, could there be a more perfect match than the intergalactic ambassador to the Printiverse and a company named Zycon? They pretty much had me at hello, but they actually do really cool things with print. And uh, one of the really cool things they do is show off uh, how their technology is so precise by printing. Is it the Declaration of Independence or the Constitution? It's actually the Complete Universal Declaration of Human Rights. Oh, okay. You have gone further now. Printed on the back of a business card. And if you used a magnifying glass, you could read every single word. You also are doing some unique things with FDA approved inks, which uh, makes Zycon a very interesting company. Also one of uh, the companies really representing labels and uh, packaging too. So without further ado, Donna, and also you have, uh, have been with Project Peacock all through the print fairs and are writing and dying, dying with us on this platform. No dying, only writing. Uh, but I just want to thank you and everybody over in um, Belgium. Thank you so much for your support, Donna. Thank you, Deborah. Um, we really appreciate being a part of this Printerverse and the Project Peacock fairs and the platform. And we just continue to look forward to whatever whatever you come out with next, Deborah. So thank you, including the peaks that we did with you a couple a couple of years ago. Um, so thanks again for the great introduction. Some of you may not know who Zycon is. Uh, we uh, manufacture digital production presses that offer some unique benefits one of a couple of which that Deborah mentioned. Um, another thing that our presses do is we are roll fed, which enable virtually unlimited length output. And you'll see some of that in our, in our booth today. So that's great for signage and floor graphics and posters and books and book covers and wall deco. And of course, unique pieces for direct mail. So Deborah mentioned that uh, we do have great um, features for security like our business card with our one print a uh, one point print and also that our presses do our simplex presses offer that FDA certified toner dry toner and really what that does is right true compliance for your peace of mind and for the health of your customers is really what that's all about so explore our booth. Um, certainly there's the product details in there, but for our other creatives that are in the audience today, check out really the applications that our, that our products produce because it really is about not just somebody that wants a print service provider, but also for marketing folks, creatives and agencies thinking about what you could do with digital printing. And we've got some really cool things to show you. We've got some unbiased uh, industry reports where people are thinking about toner and inkjet. So have a read, read on that. So just explore our space. We maybe start with our introductory video that uh, will tell you all about Zycon and some of the things may surprise you in a good way. Um, the team, the Zycon team is here. We've got Deb Dorgan and we've got Greg Ross who is uh, standing in for Stephen Carlini. Um, at 740, I'd like to also welcome you to our booth where I'll take you through some of those applications. So again, really great to be here and looking forward to a fun evening. Thank you, Deborah, and the team. Thank you so much. Um, so that's really it. Uh, we're going to uh, unleash you uh, on the booths now, everybody. I just want to remind you again, please don't uh, click the screen share button if you go into a join live. If you have any issues or problems, uh, pop over into the Project Peacock information booth. Uh, Josh Power is in there. He will help you. And um, Peacock Peacock long and prosper, everybody. Thank you so much for your time and I'll see you on the platform.